So you have decided to take the leap to lithium batteries. Out with the old dirty lead acid batteries and you purchased yourself some brand new 12 volt lithium batteries for your application. Congratulations. Time to just throw them into service, right? Well, if you can give yourself an extra day and watch this video, I'm going to show you a technique that you can do just prior to service and you're going to get more capacity and more life out of these batteries and they're going to last longer for you. Hi, I'm David and welcome to my channel where I like to DIY renewable energy and energy efficiency projects. Now for the purposes of this video, these are generic 12 volt lithium iron phosphate batteries. The nominal voltage is 12.8 volts per battery. Now this could be any brand that you've decided on. This could be Battleborn, Kilovolt, Relyon, uh, Renogy, SOK, it doesn't matter. First, we're going to string them together in series without any prep work and we'll do a capacity test and see what we get. Then I'm going to show you the one extra step that you could take when you first get these batteries that's going to ensure longer life and worry-free operation and more capacity in the end. I typically do my projects in 48 volt, but this technique is going to be equally applicable for 24 volt and 36 volt applications. So we're going to run these together as four batteries in series or 4S, which will give us 48 volts at the two outside most terminals. 13.06 battery 2, 13.07, 13.05, 13.05. So only 20 millivolts difference between them. So these should be good to just go right out of the box, but we're gonna go one step further. To make it easier for you to see what's going on with every battery in this test, I've purchased a few of these little tiny voltmeters. I now have all four batteries arranged in series for a 48 volt arrangement. I'm going to charge the battery using this lithium charger. Now this is a CCCV charger, meaning constant current, constant voltage. This type of thing you can purchase for any arrangement, uh, whether that's 24 volt, 36, 48, and different chemistries. So make sure that you're matching what your battery pack is. These batteries were charging for about one and a half hours, and then the light turned green on the charger. So I'm going to turn this on one more time so that we can see that uh, happen right on camera. So we're running and I'm going to turn this on. We're supplying voltage and suddenly this particular one is shooting up 13.9, 14, and it killed it. So what happened is this battery got fully charged and the other ones are not charged yet. As you can see, one of the batteries fully charged and its BMS cut off before the rest of them are fully charged. So they're at different state of charges, different SOCs. But they all had the same voltage when we checked them out of the box. And that's what happens because the lithium iron phosphate batteries have such a flat curve, voltage curve to state of charge curve, that you can't tell just with the voltmeter what the state of charge is. So this one is fully charged and the other ones aren't. So now we're going to go into a discharge mode. I drew out a voltage curve uh, to demonstrate for this video, but whatever brand battery you choose, you can contact them and look up in the manual and they probably have a voltage curve that they can share with you. So we've got everything hooked up and we're doing our discharge test. We're going to let this run. Now eventually one of these batteries is gonna reach 0% and the BMS will shut off or the pack voltage will reach too low and the inverter will shut off. One of the two, we'll see. Well, our capacity test is over. The BMS on the battery shut down and we were able to get 826 watt hours or 16.3 amp hours. Now it discharged in just one and a half hours, so that was less time than I thought it would be. I thought we'd get a little bit more out of that, but these are used batteries. Now the total capacity doesn't actually matter for the purposes of this video, because what we're gonna do is now show you the technique of what we need to do to balance these packs out in advance, and then we'll run a second capacity test tomorrow and see how much better we do. At this point, I've rearranged all four 12 volt batteries to be parallel with each other. 
On one side, I used a strip of copper. On the next side, I'm just going to use a piece of copper wire. And the reason is simply that I want to demonstrate that it doesn't have to be one type of thing or another. There's a lot of ways to do this. I'm using my needle nose pliers and I'm pinching this copper wire around the shaft of the screwdriver. And it doesn't really matter what, so long as it's about the same size as the screw. Now I can remove the screwdriver and I'm gonna screw this down onto the post. Now all four battery modules are parallel together and all of their voltages are going to equalize. The voltages of each battery are very similar to each other. When we took them out of the box, there was only 20 millivolts difference. And they're gonna be plus or minus that right now. They're not very far apart. And that's because lithium iron phosphate has a very flat voltage curve to state of charge in the middle. So you're just not gonna be able to pick up the slight differences of voltage across them. The longer you let these sit parallel, the more equal they will become. So you could leave these sit for a month paralleled and eventually they'll become perfect. But a way to make it faster is to also put a very small charge on them and charge them all up together. I like to top balance my cells uh, because I'm quite often hitting the 100% mark. That's what I try to do. And I don't usually take mine all the way down. So to top balance these packs all in parallel like this, let's go ahead and hook up a charger. Okay, we've now got a 12 volt charger and it's charging all four in parallel. So we've paralleled all the positives together and we've paralleled all the negatives together. And here are the two clamps. The purpose of paralleling them while you're also charging them is that we're pushing this into the very steep section of the curve, the state of charge curve to voltage curve. When lithium iron phosphate cells are up at 3.65 volts per cell, the voltage curve is very steep, which means there's more accuracy to be gained. Uh, so we're going to be able to parallel and balance them faster with more accuracy by doing it this method instead of just letting them sit in their nominal voltage range. So I'm gonna let this finish charging and then continue to sit fully charged. Tomorrow we'll rearrange this back into the 48 volts. We'll run another capacity test and we should be able to get more capacity out of these cells. Good morning everyone. It's the next day and these have been sitting overnight. At some point during the night, the charger finished charging and it's now showing a green light. So it's not putting in any more amps into the batteries. They're all paralleled and we're gonna break them down and put them back into the series connection. I will link to this particular charger that I'm using. It's nothing fancy. It just happened to be one that fit the parameters of what I was looking for. Uh, I think it was $36 on Amazon. And I personally think it's worth buying something like this, even if you're just gonna use it once a year for maintenance charge. Uh, I think they're worth having in your toolbox. We are all hooked up and ready for our second discharge test. We still have two space heaters on the floor. We have our same inverter and our same meter. And I zeroed everything out. This one needs to be turned on. and 10 amps. We just finished our second capacity test. We were able to get 17.1 amp hours out of the second test for 875 watt hours. Now that is about a 6% increase, which is fantastic. I mean, that's an extra 6% that we didn't have to pay for. It was just a balancing thing. Let's discuss what we just saw. I'm going to use some drawings here to help visualize uh, what happened. When I first took the voltage readings of the individual batteries, there was only a 20 millivolt difference between the highest and lowest. Now I threw on some uh, percentages here just to illustrate the point. Then when we charged them all up, we saw that one of the batteries reached 100% before the rest, and its BMS would shut off and that would kill the charger. Then when we put it into discharge mode, another battery reached 0% before the rest, and it shut its BMS off, which killed the inverter. 
and this would keep going on and on. Now those two batteries that had the highest state of charge and the lowest state of charge, they would get abused more than the other two and they would wear out sooner. But if we can balance all the packs together, then they'll all be used together and hopefully you can keep them out of that really steep section at the top and bottom of the curve and that will make all the batteries last longer and hopefully last equally long together. So now when I go to charge the pack as a, as a full pack in series using a 48 volt charger, I, I can bring them all back up together. Now I might set the maximum charge voltage for something like this at 56 volts and my minimum cut off at something like 49 volts. That would keep you inside the bulk of the power without having to go to the absolute most or bottom end of the voltage curve. That's gonna make the batteries last longer. Now if they were out of spec and you constantly have that BMS shutting down because one is constantly hitting high voltage or constantly hitting low voltage, well then that is putting extra wear and tear on the batteries that you just don't need to. Having them balanced is gonna keep you from doing that which will make the batteries last longer. Well, there we go, 6% uh, extra capacity and added life and longevity to your battery system. Uh, so I hope that makes sense and answers that uh, question that I get so often about how to commission the system. So please like the video, subscribe, comment, and share. Thanks everybody.